Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to Box Mining. Feeling really great today, <laughs> but the markets are in a very turbulent state. So we're going to take a quick look at how the markets are moving, what I'm doing to prepare myself for that. We'll also take a look at what's on the news. So we had a week of trading on the bat platform. So we'll talk a little bit about how many trades really went on there. We'll talk about what's happening next as well, like Telegram ton there's a lot of chat right now and on how overvalued it is and i'll talk about some of my expectations towards the launch that is expected at the end of october finally we're going to talk a little bit also about security as well because recently there's a few reports that there are hackers directly targeting crypto users and i really want to chime in on that as well so that's all for today's discussions guys and guys, if you guys haven't subscribed to my channel yet, I make a lot of content on cryptocurrencies, including guides and also market insights as well. So make sure you're subscribed and you click the little notification bell so you know when the new videos are released. And of course, everything covered here is my personal opinion, not financial advice. Let's get straight into it. In terms of trades today, today has been extremely turbulent, especially if you're in Asia. So in one giant candle on the 15 minute time scale, we saw Bitcoin going from 7,950 to 7,770. So yeah, that's the state of today's affairs. But obviously that price got rejected and we're moving up again. In terms of what's going on, Bitcoin really is trying to find a new trend. So right now that trend is still very, very unclear and that's setting people off, especially because right now, if you just zoom out a little bit and take a look at one day. So after breaking down below the 200 day moving average, that set a lot of people into a state of unease. Right now in terms of RSI, we're having really low numbers, like 20. That's actually broken down below what Bitcoin was very comfortable at for like the more longest amount of time above 30. So a lot of traders are feeling, oh, this is confirmation that we're not in a bull market, that potentially we can go and retest our previous supports, maybe down to 7,500, 6,000 was brought up, then maybe a little bit lower, 5,000, and perhaps even down here to your January levels of 3,000. So I have to say something is that I'm going to take a vacation at the end of this month. Yeah, not the month, this week rather. And I'm heading to Iceland for two weeks, which means that personally for me, I want to be in a position where I don't have to trade in a, on a daily basis. And this is why I have like the thumbnail. Oh, if it's a bull or bear, I don't care. You know, that's that's a state I want to be in because I know for fact, I'm planning for the fact that I might be away from my computer. I might be off somewhere without internet access. So I want to be in a position that I'm not over leveraged. So if Bitcoin, you know, goes all the way down, I'm not affected, nor am I underexposed. So if Bitcoin really does re-enter, I'm not personally affected. And just recently moving into that state made me a lot happier because at the end of the day, I learned from my mistakes of the past. So in the past, I thought, you know, Bitcoin was a bubble. I could have entered in at 2012 with my own money, bought it at 10, 12, 15, 20. Doesn't really matter at what that point. It just almost sounds comical it was at that point. So that was my lesson learned. I don't have to wait for the perfect entry. That's why I've been dollar cost averaging on my HODL amount. And then also, I don't want to be overexposed. That's what 2017 taught me where prices can go all the way up. And if you're overexposed, what really happens is that if there's a tiny fluctuation down, you just feel so bad. You feel like, oh my God, I just crashed a car almost in terms of value loss. So that's where I'm moving towards um, in the long term. And I've been telling you guys that I recently switched to dollar cost average belly buying, but that's not very trade intensive. It's just really just looking at your set points and just methodically hammering it in and so this was posted up recently by Tom Lee, one of the investors in Bitcoin. And he talks about the rule of 10 days where during the bull market, it really a lot of the price action happened within the time frame of 10 days. It wasn't gradual. It was 
explosion. Took only 10 days for Bitcoin to go up 1,136%. I mean, the insanity of that. And the remaining days were not profitable. And this is why the HODL strategy works. It's because if you kind of missed out on that, you'll be like beating yourself, you know, ugh, beating, ugh. But if you <laughs> bought in at the height, you'll be starting to lose money. So at the end of the day, dollar cost averaging, then you can take advantage of the explosion. Now let's go for news in no particular order. We got backed. So the volume for the first week of the backed launch, it's just in 627 Bitcoin contracts being traded on day one. So if you're looking at today's prices, let's just do a quick calculation here. Two seven times times eight thousand. So if you do a quick calculation up right now, that totals five million dollars traded in a week. And for reference, Coinbase trades 93 million in a day. So yeah, not a lot of volume on one of the most hyped exchanges. And it really goes to show how long it really takes for adoption and for people to start using new products. Personally, am I disappointed? Not at all. <laughs> it takes a long as time for something like this to work. But what I do see is that as people do understand what is Bitcoin, this provides a on ramp for people to understand, especially institutional investors who need a very solid, trustworthy way to get in with their clients' funds. And that's why BACT is important in the long run. But in the short run, the, num the futures, the volume trading on it is very, very minimal right now. And also in terms of news as well, we got the CME group. They're launching Bitcoin options in 2020. So this was announced last week. And you can see that competition already heating up. All right, this is alarm. The next, this next bit of news is alarming. So, um, US and UK they're gonna sign a treaty with Facebook to allow encrypted messages to be read. So this is actually building a backdoor into a messaging service that a lot of people use, and the law enforcement is gonna see those messages. Now, adding a backdoor means that law it's good for law enforcement because obviously you can stop drug trades etc but at the other hand if that backdoor is broken into that allows hackers to read our messages uh, at this current point i would probably say i'm gonna fully migrate to a telegram because it's just much more secure or any other maybe some like signal um, apps that do value privacy above everything else all right, talking about privacy and Telegram and communications, my God, the Telegram token is really reaching a craze. So, all right, here's what I've read so far. And this is a pretty good analysis. This is by Binance Research about what Telegram network is. So Telegram open network is a token that's going to be usable on Telegram. And you, all, you guys all know that. But what you probably didn't know is that the value of said token, the last value that was publicly known is $4, which is total insanity if you think about it. Because when they fundraised, it was first sold at $0.38, cents, now being sold at $4, it sets a market capitalization of $20 billion US dollars. And if you put it that on a chart, it's above Ethereum, so it's even more valuable than Ethereum. It's double of that of uh, XRP. I mean, it's almost seven times that of EOS. Crazy. But anyways, I think that's because of all the hype. I mean, once we tokens get launched, we'll see what happens. Right now, because speculation is still adrift, people don't know what it's going to be used for. I mean, it's got a lot of promises, but the use case is not fully established. We do know the number of users, and that's what's kind of really driving the speculation. But what I'm really <laughs> concerned about is just that valuation at launch. But at the end of the day, speculate, speculate. But if we can get users to start using this token, to start bringing them into the cryptocurrency ecosystem, to get them <laughs> understanding what it is, it's always good. It's always an on-ramp. And that's what's positive about this. Lastly, security. This was kind of frightening, 6.4 billion, sorry. Lastly, security, $6.4 million of fusion tokens were stolen from 
the when one of the wallets that the foundations held. So yikes! That was that amount was sent to exchanges. Hackers liquidated that and dumped on the hands of Fusion holders. So if you look at Fusion, uh, when that news kind of broke out, <laughs> the there was an insane amount of dump from almost fifty cents down to twenty cents. Now of course they're trying to recover, and this is why kind of dump mentals are really important. You know, understanding who holds what and who has ability to dump when. That's a really important factor, and I have a video on the dumplementals of coins. But beyond that, the reason why、um, the public reason is that one of the keys were stolen, one of the private keys were stolen by hackers. But of course, you have to take their word for it, whatnot. Maybe could it be an inside job? Who knows? I, I still don't understand how they can really explain themselves out of this one. And lastly, on the note of security as well,、um, this was a very catchy topic. I read post Bitcoin. Post crash, Bitcoin warning as wallet targeted in an active and ongoing hack attack. That sounds really scary, but at the core of this, what's going on is that there are two types of viruses. One is called Mossad, Clipper, and Stealer. And what they do is that these viruses can be masked, maybe in files people download. So if you accidentally click on a file that someone sent you on Telegram, there's a risk that it might be infected with one of these files. And then what it does is that it monitors a computer for Bitcoin addresses, and it tries to replace those. So just when you're kind of like sending a cryptocurrency transaction or whatnot, it'll try to look in that memory and modify the actual value whilst displaying the correct one on your screen. I mean, it takes it. It's kind of crazy if you think about it. So the computer will not. So if you're It sounds crazy if you think about it. So if if you're affected by this virus, what it basically means is that you're gonna see that you're gonna send it to yourself to to your correct wallet. But what's gonna really happen is that in the back end, hackers are gonna stealthily modify the address. And this is why you need one of these devices like a hardware wallet because even if your computer is compromised, the correct address will still display on your hardware wallet. And that's one of the most primary features is that it protects you. From potential theft. So if this still is quite unfamiliar to you, I have an article: hot wallets versus cold wallets, its differences, pros and cons. Looking at all the vulnerability, what's possible in this space, and also different reviews on wallets on BoxMining.com. So make sure you check that out. And guys, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed this update. Well, I am going to Iceland. I'm really looking forward to it. Actually, at the end of this week. So, what you can expect on this channel is that I'm going to still be publishing videos. I won't be gone. I'll be publishing videos, but they will be the more of the evergreen content. So, very much long-term trends, learning, understanding content while I'm away, and that will provide a good change balance to all that. Oh my God, price changes action that that we're seeing today. And guys, what? Tell me also what you're doing in this crypto space. Are you preparing for long term or doing some short term trades? I'd love to hear them down in the comment section below. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you subscribe to this channel and check out. I got a, a new box mining shirt. I'm trying to do more、uh, shirts and stuff, just experimenting with that. Hopefully, if you guys want some merch in the future, write a comment down below and have a good day.